היי, 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 היי. שלום לכם וברוכים הבאים לערוץ הקטן שלי היום, today, on this beautiful day. I want to bring you the latest uh, edition of Hot Second Hebrew. Hot Second Hebrew. And the word for today's Hot Second Hebrew is Milhama or Milhama. Milhama or Milhama. The word for war. The word for war. Sadly, uh, my mind had been set on uh, this uh, Hebrew word for Hot Second Hebrew for some time now. And it happens to coincide with actual world events. As you know, there is a war uh, in Ukraine or Ukraine, and men, women, and sadly children are losing their lives. Um, as believers in Mashiach Yeshua, uh, and in, as believers in uh, the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, we were commanded by Messiah to be salt and light, uh, that the world would know that we are his Talmudim or his disciples by the way that we love one another. So I want to remind you and remind myself always to pray for those um, <clears throat> that are hurting, um, that are in need. Um, yeah, so let's all do that. Today's hot second Hebrew word, <clears throat> as I mentioned, is... Milhama, Milhama or Milhama. I'm going to pull out the old dry erase board here, my buddy. And we are going to write the word. Now, there are a lot of interesting things about this word. You know, of all things you say, you know, or you might think. The word war, of all words, you know, what could be interesting about the word war or the Hebrew word for war? Well, of course, as you know from previous, um, yeah, I guess we can say episodes of Hot Second Hebrew, uh, some of the foundational things that you might remember is the fact that every Hebrew word has a three-letter more often than not, three letters, sometimes two letters. <clears throat> three letter shorish or root. Three letter <clears throat> shorish or root. Milhama. Milhama. And let me give you a little cantillation here. Milhama. Milhama or milhama. So as you've noticed, I have left uh, the middle letters in a different uh, color, in a different color. I've written the, uh, or written, is it? Yeah, I wrote uh, the middle letters of this word in a different color because I want to show you the shorish or the root. And interestingly enough, the word milchama or milhama which means war, conflict, okay, battle. The root of that word is lechem, lechem, yeah? Yes, it is a biscuit, it is a biscuit. Lechem, or bread, is the root of the word milchama, lechem, or bread. Hmm, let's talk about that for a minute. What did bread represent in um, ancient times, okay? Well, let's try to think about it in this way. If there is no bread, there will be no war. If there is no bread and no one has eaten, no one will have the energy nor the life force in order to fight a war and or a conflict. <clears throat> Lechem, or bread, might bring a lot of thoughts to your mind. Like, for example, where was Messiah born? Bethlehem, 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 the house of bread. He said himself, I am the bread of life. I am the bread that comes down from heaven. 
Um, there are also statements that Mashiach Yeshua makes in the Brit HaChadashah in the New Testament that sometimes are a little cringeworthy, a little cringeworthy. As a matter of fact, he made a statement about actually ingesting his uh, flesh and drinking his blood. Um, even though he did not mean that literally, um, the text does say that he lost, you know, quite a few, quite a few followers. So let's see if we can kind of bring more sense to the statement that he made uh, by looking at the word for war, of all things. See if we can bring a little bit more clarity or a little bit more sense to what he was saying uh, by looking at the root of the word milchama, which is lechem. So again, we talked about what lechem meant in ancient times. Well, it meant much more than bread, you guys. Much, much, much more than bread. As a matter of fact, lechem in the old, old, old times meant meat. Okay, I better put that down. Lechem meant meat. Okay, for example, got to get that grease off. For example, in Arabic, the word for meat is lahme, lahme. It is the same word as lechem in Hebrew, or lechem, lahme, lechem, lahme. Can you hear it? It's the same word. It is the word for meat, but more than just meat, it meant primary food. Primary food, okay? Uh, which means means that lahme or even lechem um, could be whatever the primary food was, whatever the people primarily depended upon for food is what lahme or lechem is. In Arabic also, Bethlehem is called Beit Lahme. Beit Lahme in Arabic and in Hebrew, Beit Lechem. Okay, you can hear it's pretty much the same thing. How do I know for sure? Well, there's a lot of uh, extra biblical writings that will confirm this. But if you take a look in the book of Zephaniah or Zephaniah, uh, chapter 1, I think around verse 17, if I'm not mistaken. Don't, don't shoot me for it if I'm off a little bit. Zephaniah or Zephaniah chapter 1, around verse 17 or so, it says that Vishafach uh, damam ke'afar and their blood will be poured out like dust, okay? Velahmam, and their flesh, consequently, uh, will suffer some similar destructive uh, fate. But it's speaking of disaster, and the blood of the people being poured out like dust, and in the very, right after the comma, in the same sentence, okay, context, it mentions lahmam, their flesh, not their bread, okay? No one is made of blood and bread, okay? Apparently. Gingerbread man. Hmm, not even him. Sweet thought. Okay, but lehem, okay, also, or in the instance of the Zephaniahu verse, Zephaniah verse, is referencing flesh as lehem or lahme as bread. So now think of the words of Yeshua now, okay? Even though he was speaking only metaphorically, okay? You take into account that uh, how the word lehem or lahme was used, we know that he's saying that my body, my body, okay, is the primary food. Well, why is he saying that his body is the primary food? Okay, because he's offering it up, okay? He's offering his body up as a sacrifice for the target people first and then for those who would want to latch on and come on for the ride, okay? All right, so he's saying that my flesh, okay, the sacrifice that I'm giving is the real food, is the real food, is the lahme, is the primary food. And we know, of course, in the Tanakh, the sin offering had to be eaten in order for sin to be remitted. Keep that in mind, okay? Um, so yeah, milhama, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the word bread or primary food or sustenance is at the root of the word for war. 
what is primary food or sustenance for people today in countries? Greed, natural resources, territory, control over people. So war is nothing but bloodshed and death in order to gain literal, literal gold, black gold. Um, minerals in order to build more cell phones, um, on and on and on, on and on and on and on, okay? So this is milhama, the uh, hot second Hebrew word for today, was milhama, and at the root of milhama is the word lehem, or bread, or meat, or primary food is what it meant in ancient Times. <clears throat> so, having said that, a very short hot second Hebrew, fo focusing on the word milhama. I hope uh, that this day um, is good for you. I hope that it's a blessing. Um, I hope that you're safe in your corner of the United States. Um, yeah, for you and yours. And remember, um, the African continent is war torn and constantly under. Um, war itself and threat of war, sectarian wars, X, Y, and Z. And our people are definitely suffering from one end of the continent to the other. Um, as we remember our own directly, genetically, biologically, those who look the most like us, X, Y, and Z, let's also remember everyone who doesn't necessarily look like us because they are all made in the image of and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we are to pray for them and keep them in mind. So for Mother Africa, and for those who are hurting, and for those who are afraid, don't know where their next meal is coming from, don't know who is creeping outside uh, in the darkness who may want to harm them, for the people and the young children of Taman or Yemen who are under the threat of war from the Houthi rebels and all of the other dark factors involved within this situation, uh, and for the men, women, and children of Ukraine. May the Most High preserve their lives <clears throat> and their souls, and may they come to know Yeshua as Messiah. Thank you so much for your time and for your patience. I am going to get back to uh, the Lehem that I have sitting here who can't, you know, let it go to waste. We have wars to fight. All right, folks, the good, good wars uh, with the only sword that matters, the sword of the word. Okay, may the host, Most High watch over you and keep you. May he lift his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Most High raise his countenance upon you and give you his shalom and his peace. I'll see you soon.